How's it going, Eliminators? Today, we're gonna to be doing a quick little update video on a Briggs & Stratton carburetor design flaw that I filmed about a year ago. So let's get right into it. So if you'll remember, I did a video about a year ago on a Briggs & Stratton 675 EXI engine, and it had a design flaw on the carburetor which allowed the choke to stick. But I wanted to show you guys what Briggs & Stratton did to resolve the issue. So just a quick little refresh on how these engines work. When your engine's cold, the choke lever right here is always reset to the closed or the choke on position so that when your engine's cold, you can start it up and it gets maximum fuel. There is the bimetallic strip right up there. And once your engine warms up, it pushes on that rod. Now, once that arm starts to rotate forward, you'll see that it engages the choke lever, opening it up. Now the issue with the Briggs & Stratton design flaw is that this little plastic choke lever right here, the plastic on it would get caught up against this metal support. But because the little choke lever there would stick, the next time you went to start up your lawnmower, well, it wouldn't go into the auto choke mode. Now in my video, I just went ahead and took a little file and wore away at the plastic because this is just a little plastic arm so you can take a file and quickly take down that plastic and then you know it worked perfectly fine it always reset under that tension of the spring now i had posted that video last year in 2019 i believe so fast forward to 2020 and briggs and stratton has actually fixed the issue so coming down to the metal bracket here you guys can see that they simply cut a slot into the metal plate which allows that plastic choke arm there to go through and not get caught. Now that to me seems like a fairly expensive fix because this seems like it's stamped steel and they would have to create a new die in order to stamp that little oval slot into that plate. Whereas they could have just made a change to the plastic die that makes this arm here and I think it would have been much easier to just put less material on that choke arm, but maybe I'm wrong. I mean, maybe it was easier for them to do that, and uh, maybe it would have been more expensive to change the die for this plastic mold here. But regardless, the issue is now fixed, and now this arm cannot get stuck, and your lawnmower will always be in the choke position when your engine's cold. So I just wanted to do an update on that, to let you guys know that you know the manufacturers do update these designs here if they get a bunch of warranty claims. And that's similar to the Cub Cadet CC30 that I worked on where it had the deck safety switch on that little piece of plastic and what would happen was the wing nut would loosen off, that piece of plastic would pop up, disengage your safety switch and then your lawnmower wouldn't start but it wouldn't really look as if the piece of plastic had shifted all that much. So I had shown you in that video, which I'll link in the top right of the screen as well, that they ended up making a fix, I think it was about three years later, where they welded a piece of metal onto the top of where that safety switch went so that it didn't allow that plastic to pop up. So just a quick little update video showing you guys that you know the manufacturers will go ahead and try to remedy the issue if they get enough warranty claims because, well, it'll end up costing them a fortune to have all these brand new mowers come back that won't start because of a design flaw. So that's gonna wrap up today's video. Like I said, just a quick little update video because I ended up getting that mower in and it needed a carb clean. And when we were disassembling it, we noticed that they had gone ahead and changed the design. And I was actually quite surprised to see that Briggs & Stratton chose to change the die that stamps that piece of steel instead of choosing to redesign the mold that forms the plastic choke lever. However, what I didn't think about at the time was that these carburetors may not be manufactured by Briggs & Stratton. They could be manufactured by a third-party supplier, possibly from China. Briggs & Stratton gets them into the U.S., and then they can say that the lawnmower is assembled in the U.S. or manufactured in the U.S. But that's going to be it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week, so be sure to stop on by next week, check channel out for more content, and as always guys, thanks for watching.